Welcome to our video. From the earliest days of science fiction, people have been fascinated with the notion of invisibility. Until very recently, that idea remained fantasy and worthy of profound skepticism. But now, invisibility is a very real science. And here, Fractal Antenna Systems shows you the first video of a working invisibility cloak. It is a breakthrough based on its wide-bandedness, fidelity, simplicity of design, and ability to see out of when cloaked. Let's get some facts forward. We're going to show you a lab prototype. It is designed to test and prove out ideas and technologies. It's not a practical device. You can't wear it. You can't lug it around. It's not meant to work in three dimensions yet and it doesn't work at visual light. It is a wideband microwave invisibility cloak made of rings of circuit boards that slipstream microwaves to produce the cloaking. You can see microwaves out of it and are not blind while in it. No one has done this before that is a see out of wideband cloak, including researchers at Duke and elsewhere. In science, you have to have a foundation to build on. We have provided that foundation for invisibility science, showing how fractals make it possible. What are you going to see? Let's start with an analogy of a flashlight. If I place an object between you and the flashlight, something that's opaque, the intensity you see goes down quite a bit, so you're barely seeing the light. Scientists would say, for example, that your intensity dropped by, say, 10 dB. If you had a working, again this doesn't exist, visual light cloak, the light would be slipstreamed around the opaque object and converge again on your side, so to you it looks like there's no obstacle at all. Scientists would say the light is down, say, 2 dB from the direct value. This is simulated here by a piece of slightly frosted glass. If you didn't know there was a cloak being used, you'd conclude that you'd be looking directly at the flashlight with nothing in between. Hence, the object would be invisible. Here's another visual that may help. In other words, we're going to show you that we can, with good fidelity, restore the intensity you'd see if there was nothing between the path of two microwave antennas. There's an obstacle in the way, but all you see is the other side. That's what an invisibility cloak does, through slip streaming, with no power, no projection equipment, and so on. It's totally passive. Microwaves are a big part of daily life. Cell phones work at microwaves. We chose microwaves because we can prove out the science and technology on a size scale we can easily work with. In fact, the actual cloak is a series of partless circuit board rings. Each ring has a myriad of fractal resonators. These fractal resonators, when used in different ways, can have lens-like, reflector, or ducting qualities. And with just a handful of such rings, we can get a very wide bandwidth to cloak. There's a special inner ring that defines the inside of the cloak. It's conveniently called the object. Anything inside is cloaked, as the fractal cloak rings slipstream the microwaves around the object. Technically, you'd call this an antipodal ducting system with plasmonics of fractal resonators with a fractal boundary condition. And yes, that's quite a mouthful. Just imagine the work it took to make it, let alone say it. So what we have is an object to be surrounded by several cloak rings. We place these on a spoked wheel with R transparent combs as ring supports and nest the rings to produce the slip streaming. And then we measure the intensity over 500 to 1300 megahertz passband. Here's the approach. We start by placing two antennas with the wheel in between. We measure intensities and then call this the normalized intensity. In dB, it's a straight line at zero on the graph. Each vertical decrement is three dB. Now we place the object ring in the way. 
It's the black ring placed here by two of our researchers in sped up motion. Watch how the intensity drops from the middle line to as much as 12 dB down across the passband. That means as little as 7% of the intensity makes it through the object. It's pretty much opaque to microwaves. In other words, there's an obstacle in the way. Now we press hold on that and build up the cloak rings. leaving out a couple to speed up the process and not give you motion sickness. Taking the hold off, the data then shows how the intensity goes up, matching closely the intensity you get with no obstacle present, that is the direct path. The microwaves have slipstreamed around the object, guided by these fractal resonator ring. The bumpiness on the graph technically shows a maximum deviation of less than 2 dB below and about 1 dB above the intensity of the direct path. It's caused by the fact that we don't have a completely perfect cloak, just as a slightly dirty window is not a perfect piece of glass. It magnifies a teeny bit and also distorts slightly. Now we put several things inside the object ring and watch how the video shows almost no change. These trinkets all have sizes and metal structures that resonate in our microwave passband, including our Gumby Pal and cell phone. Notice how these objects don't change the results. You could have a little party inside that space and no one would even know anything was there at all, at least at microwaves. Finally, we deconstruct that party. Bye bye rings! The intensity now changes slightly back to the direct path as expected. Here's a summary of what this cloak does. In part two, we will show how you can look outside of the cloak while being cloaked and what the scattering looks like. Also, check out the FAQs listed here and on the website as we update them frequently. We hope you enjoyed this video and welcome you to view our other videos from Fractal Antenna Systems. Check out our website at www.fractenna.com.